All right. Hey, good afternoon, folks. Once again, we are back taking a look at the tropics. Today is Monday, July 14th, 2025. This is your afternoon tropical update. Where we today are talking about Invest 93L, a tropical system that is trying to get organized near the coast of Florida. We have this broad area disturbed weather, technically not tropical yet, I guess, but it is trying to become tropical. This whole system is going to be slowly drifting off to the west over the next couple of days. We'll eventually move into the northern Gulf and could set its sights on the central Gulf Coast, Mississippi, Louisiana, even as far east or west rather as Texas. So a lot to talk about here. As we do with these videos, sometimes I'm going to spend the first couple minutes just hitting the big stuff, not getting at all the weather jargon mumbo jumbo. We're going to get you what you need to know, and if you want to stick around, we'll kind of loop back around and talk a little more satellite, weather radar, that kind of thing of what we've seen today with 93L. So let's not waste any time. National Hurricane Center's uh, 2 p.m. update, they do these at 2 and 8 when we are we don't have anything named yet, uh, 5 and 11 when we do. So latest from the National Hurricane Center, 20% chance of development in the next 48 hours and 30% for the next 7 days. You can see this hash marked area is anywhere the system could try to form. So it leaves some uh, real estate open in the central to southern Gulf. And it also keeps it pretty close to coast possible. We also saw them kind of move this back a little bit at 2 p.m. They've left themselves a small window to call this right before it makes landfall in Florida. Probably won't get a name before landfall. It could be a potential tropical cyclone or a tropical depression. Wouldn't surprise me if they wanted to throw a few tropical storm watches up like tomorrow for like posterity or just to be safe, something they kind of do sometimes. Not too worried about it, though. It's not going to be much of an impact for Florida besides a lot of rainfall, which we'll talk about. But uh, the more likely chance of this becoming a more organized tropical system, tropical storm, and or potentially hurricane is going to be more in the central Gulf as it moves towards Mississippi, Louisiana, or even more towards Texas, depending on the exact trajectory that it takes. Visible satellite, a little bit behind here on Tropical Tidbits, having some intermittent feed issues from the GO satellite. But uh, only about two hours old, not very old. Big things to know, just like real quick. Again, center of circulation somewhere around here, somewhere around like 30... 78 79 the hurricane hunters are actually going to be right here tomorrow morning so they think this is going to generally drift off to the west over the next couple of hours and into tomorrow morning so uh, we saw it look kind of impressive uh, earlier this afternoon. Look, it was really kind of trying to make a run, and it's kind of falling back apart a little bit. There's a lot of dry air and a lot of wind shear. We know this because all the, the thunderstorms are pushed well south of where that circulation center is. And to the north, there's a lot of dry air, very sparse clouds, no thunderstorms, and uh, bands of dry air working down the coast of Georgia and Florida this morning or this afternoon. So we do know that 93L is still in a pretty marginal environment, and this is probably not going to blow up in the next couple of hours and become a serious threat to Florida. It's just not very well organized and it's kind of getting beat up by the environment around it. Give me a rough idea of what this might look like. Our computer models are still going to be all over the place. They've just gotten the word about the invest tag. So the models are trying to start lock in, locking in on this, but they're going to be all over the place because this doesn't really have a coherent center yet. It kind of had one then it fell apart. The models are going to be a lot of just, they're going to be a mess. Just please don't put too much stock. Don't take any money to the bank on any one of these models just yet. I'll show you the CMC. Of all of them, this is kind of like the nice middle ground. Uh, GFS and Euro kind of have nothing, and the Icon and the UK are like blowing it up into a, a hurricane. So we're just going to go in the nice middle. The CMC today sees us moving in towards Florida tomorrow morning, kind of a weak, kind of low, not really developed yet, just a lot of scattered thunderstorms, moves it out into the Gulf on Wednesday morning, moves it slowly across on Thursday, gains a little bit of latitude, probably has a system somewhere like right here on Wednesday afternoon into early Thursday morning. And then as we keep kind of going across, this kind of slowly tries to organize right as it moves into Louisiana Thursday morning into Thursday afternoon, a lot of heavy rain for the central Gulf Coast, and then kind of goes up into land keeps it weak but probably gives it enough juice to become a tropical depression and or a tropical storm before it moves into land that is like the best like most reasonable guess of what this is going to want to do right now there are situations like the icon that show it much stronger and a little bit further west like central louisiana maybe even western louisiana up to like a cat one maybe uh, some models keep it even weaker and just drag like an uh, basically an unnamed low along the coast and just dump a bunch of rain on everybody and then there's kind of solutions in the middle like the cmc so just giving you one there 
give you a rough idea of what this is going to do. Just going to move across throughout the week. It's going to be a mess. It's going to be a rainmaker. That's kind of the big stuff. The rainfall is going to be pretty heavy. We have the Weather Prediction Center's official forecast, two to four inches for much of the northern Gulf Coast, for the western coast of Florida, uh, central Alabama's coast, you know, uh, Mississippi, all in that three, four inch range, maybe a little bit more towards Gulfport, Biloxi, and then down to that four to six inch range for southeast Louisiana. Again, remember with a tropical system, if you see three or four inches on here, that means you could get up to six or seven or even eight. It just you have to kind of add double as the reasonable worst case scenario. Uh, this is more of a broad brush, kind of what you could best reasonably expect. But again, high solutions, and some people could miss out. All the thunderstorms went around your house. Uh, well, I guess you get two inches of rain. Your neighbor 20 miles down the road, they get eight, you get two. Everybody else gets four. It's just kind of how these things go, especially with these kind of messy setups here. I think these rainfall totals will probably keep coming up a little bit through the week, so keep an eye on those. Uh, you can see some of the other computer models here. The European model, the AI version, pushes this further west and organizes it. This, the models that organize it kind of pull the rain away from everybody else. Notice those lower one to two inch totals elsewhere, but then you know a lot more where the storm would be more organized. And then you have models like the GFS in Europe that keep it weak and just kind of scatter shot everybody with rainfall. And then you have models like the Icon who really blow this thing up and are dumping a foot of rain central louisiana all these solutions are possible we just don't know yet so just kind of giving you that range of outcomes what could this look like depending on what happens well option a it's messy everybody gets some rain option b it's strong some people get a deluge other people don't get as much it's just going to be the nature of the beast until we can lock this in so the biggest threat again is going to be heavy rains marginal to slight risk that's about five to fifteen percent of flash flood risk for florida today tomorrow spreads out a little bit eastward on our westward on Wednesday and then moves more towards Louisiana and Mississippi on Friday where those heaviest rainfall totals could be reasonably expected. So that's the quick way tops version guys. We're just going to be watching it throughout the week. Again, it's not named yet. It's just something to watch and we're going to be talking about this for a couple of days. So trying to get too excited about models and everything else. Let's loop back. If you want to stick around, we'll talk a little bit more about the weather side of things. So this is a good long loop satellite and radar of 93L. So something interesting happened this morning. We had Melbourne's radar was offline until right there. And that frame, Melbourne's radar was offline. And earlier this morning, it came back to life right about, I don't know, like 11 o'clock or so, maybe noon. And all of a sudden, we had radar coverage again. And what we saw was kind of interesting. As we go through this radar step, you actually had this little low-level vortex and mid-level kind of spin trying to start. If you look right, whoops, if you look right here, it had this little low-level vortex trying to start, and it had these banding features kind of trying to start wrapping around, okay? And this was all kind of down sheer. You had a little bit of inflow underneath, and a lot of people were going, oh, man, here we go. This is it. We're It's, it's ahead of schedule, boys. We're, we're trucking now. And, um, well, if we play the rest of the satellite for you, unfortunately for our friend, uh, it all fell apart. Just went and collapsed. Now, the short version of why that happened is storms like this that are trying to organize. They have what we call the convective maximum and the convective minimum. Convective maximum is in the morning. When you have overnight, your upper air temperature is cool. Your water temperature stay the same uh, temperature. So you have more rising air. When you have warmer over, if you have warmer air over colder air, then your air wants to rise. Well, during the day, this kind of gets inverted. Your upper air warms up. Your water stays the same temperature, and then you kind of no longer have the air wanting to rise. It kind of equals out, and it doesn't want to rise as easily without any other help, right? So what was happening through the morning is it had the conductive maximum going for it. It was kind of, you know, had the best chances. It was really going. And then throughout the afternoon, all these thunderstorms appeared over the land. They shot cold air out and drier air out. And then all of these storms collapsed because they really weren't able to sustain themselves yet. That means it doesn't have enough low pressure, doesn't have enough convergence on the surface. It doesn't have enough of a vortex to be able to make its own thunderstorms. It keeps like your lawnmower is trying to start, but then it doesn't quite start. That's kind of what this is doing. In right now it needs a little more starting fluid needs a little more gas needs a little more time to get going before it really takes off and that's where 93l kind of is today radar shows it pretty clear again looking pretty good pretty good and then it all falls apart you can actually see in these last couple of frames 
you can see the lower level vortex kind of gets spit out right here, right there. Um, and you're going to see these little vortexes that look like they're trying to go, like they're trying to go, and then they're going to go, poof, and they're going to get spit out. So something else our models are doing is they're trying to lock on to these little vortexes. When you see these kind of low level centers kind of start up, and then you get a little low for a few hours, models can some of the models can see that, and sometimes they will they will overly track that, and they'll be like, oh, that's the low, and then they'll just take it and they'll just move it along forever when that's not really the case. So the other thing to kind of stress when you're talking about this kind of thing is when you have these storms, especially right about this window, we're in that invest stage where it's trying, we're getting fits and starts, it hasn't really shot off yet, you can't fully trust these models. Like the first round of the HFAST and HMON and HWERF and the CMC ensembles and the ship's model are all going to come out and everyone's going to go, oh, look at this, look at what they're doing, but you got to be careful. I'll show you a, a quick example that's really good here. Over on Tomer Berg's website uh, from the University of Oklahoma, Ship's guidance, first package for 93L. Oh boy, the ship's model, that's a good, you know, rapid intensification model. What does the ship say? Oh wow, 0%. Well, well we're good then. I mean, this isn't going to develop and hey, we're done, right? And, well, except because that took that vortex that collapsed three hours ago because that's the models are all looking in the past. So you got to give them time to catch up to what's going on, right? So the model thinks it's three or four hours ago. This initialized at 1800 UTC. That's universal standard time. Okay. So just for fun, let's real quick here. Let's, um, let's go back to 1800 and you can see here at 1806, we had a nice little low level vortex tucked up under here. We had some bands trying to ride up from the South. We had kind of a unstacked, but you know, we had some stuff going on here. We had some good convection. It was like, all right. So that's what the model thinks is going on right this minute. Well, as it turns out, that's not what's going on later on. Now, once you get something established, well, then it's just going to kind of keep doing its thing, right? So then this all changes. So this model takes this little vortex and just loops it up into the Carolinas and then just kind of gets rid of it because that's what the model's supposed to do with it because it doesn't know what else to do with that little vortex, right? So you can't use this model yet. You, you just can't. It's like it means nothing because it doesn't know what's going on. Half of the whole model thing is initialization, verification of your models. Something most people don't do. They just look at the latest model run and throw it on their website and, hey, look what I found. Like, it doesn't mean anything yet. It doesn't mean as much yet. They'll get there, and they're good when they're there. But we've got to be very, very careful with these first groups of models. Your first HVAS, your first HWERF. If they look like they kind of know what they're doing, great. If they don't, throw them out. Uh, the recon flight tomorrow from the Hurricane Hunters will help a lot. And uh, by tomorrow, what will probably happen is after a couple of fits and starts, you'll see these little vortex spin-ups try again. The, the thing is going to try to re-pull this around, and it's going to try to pull up shear, and it's going to keep doing this until one of these sticks. So it definitely doesn't mean this still can't become a tropical depression or at least a potential tropical cyclone uh, tomorrow before it gets into Florida, somewhere around like Space Coast or maybe Flagler or, or south of there. Um, but it does mean that it's going to take a little more time, and it's not just going to fire off today and just run off to the races right so what we're going to be watching for carefully is those mid-level vortexes you know where does that wind up hanging out so you can see i mean the last couple frames man it's really falling apart but uh you're probably going to see another round of trying to form up down shear you'll probably see the thunderstorms restart down here uh which could push the whole system a little bit further south you know we're gonna have to watch it very carefully through the evening but uh, this is gonna need probably another day in the oven before it can do a whole lot uh, last thing I'll leave you with is, again, the other thing we're going to be watching very carefully is how this ridge orients. we got this ridge building over the southeast U.S. Uh, you can see the anticyclonic flow and the wind barbs going around here. And uh, as 93L tucks up under this, it will be guided to the west by this high. But one of the things this is going to kind of do is sit on top of it. The divergence, the air trying to escape out of here is going to be somewhat limited. So I'm curious to see with 93L if it doesn't have a lot of divergence aloft and it doesn't have a lot of low-level convergence because you're going to have winds on the surface going like this and going like this. You know, where exactly is the lift going to come from in the Gulf besides just convective processes, which as you see, can be very messy and very uh, kind of fits and starts. So I think this is going to at least become a tropical depression. I don't think this is going to be nothing, but I, I you know, tropical storm probably, uh, especially with the Hurricane Center name stuff. But I am not sold yet. It's just my personal hunch that this is going to be all that much stronger. I think it's going to be a big rainfall event. I think it's probably going to be underestimated, especially near the coast. Just not sold yet. 
Uh, but what I would say is that little bit of a feat we saw today, don't discount this completely. I mean, if, if it finds that right window and things line up just a little bit better, it could very well pop off and do a little something in the golf. So just we're just going to watch it and keep an eye on it for the next couple of days. But uh, hopefully that little behind-the-curtain look uh, helps somebody out. Maybe it didn't. Who knows? So I got for you guys today on your Tropical Update. Thanks for watching, and have a good one.